Welcome to SoCal Training Team. Today we are going to discuss the difference between purchasing a home versus leasing a home for a residential facility. It doesn't matter if the home is for adults, children, or elderly. What I want to do is put the information out there so that you have it. I'm not telling you one way or the other to do one or the other. You have to do what's best for you. So what I'm going to do is just point out some of the important points of purchasing versus leasing. So we are going to start out discussing some of the positives about purchasing a home. Once again, I'm not giving you advice on which one you should choose, whether you should purchase or lease. We're just going to review some of the benefits of purchasing versus leasing. So one of the benefits when you want to develop a residential facility of purchasing a property is that you have the opportunity to build your property portfolio. We know in the long run, if you own a property, then there are more options available for you if you decide you want to get out the business. When you purchase a property, you also have the potential to build equity in that property. With that equity, you can pull a little a little bit of that equity out to potentially do your second facility or your third facility, vice versa. So that's another benefit of purchasing a property to do a residential facility. Another benefit to purchasing a property is that you won't have any rent increases. Yeah, you may have a rent increase per se if you pull equity from the home, but hopefully you'd be pulling that equity in order to invest it in another property to open up your second or third residential facility. But it's not the same when we get into the lease aspect of it. That's one of the things we'll discuss. So we went through the purchasing a property for a residential facility. Now we're gonna review some of the items that come along with leasing a property to open a residential facility. So when you lease a home, at least in California, to open a residential facility, you have to get permission from the owner in order to open that facility. That permission has to be in writing and it has to be included in the lease agreement. One of the downsides of leasing a property is that the owner at any time can decide they wanna sell the home. If you're not ready to purchase that home from the owner, then it puts you in a bad situation. You have to move to another home or you have to locate another home in in order to open that facility. Another facility, I should say. Another point to take to take into consideration is that the owner can raise the rent at least every year, uh, depending on the property values here in California. uh, There is probably a certain percentage. I don't know the percentage off the top of my head, but just keep in mind that they can raise the rent on you. You have to rely on the owners for repairs. This could be good and this could be bad. Yeah, you may not have to come out of pocket for repairs, major repairs that happen to the home, but you have to keep take into account that the owner is going to make repairs on their schedule, not your schedule. And for a residential facility, that may not be suitable for you. So now you have the good and bad of purchasing versus leasing. I don't think one is good or bad or the other, but it depends on your circumstances and where you're at once you're ready to develop a residential facility. There are plenty of facilities out there that are leased and they're running fine. There are plenty of facilities that are purchased. So it depends on what your ultimate goals are, what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to end up. So keep those in mind and you'll be fine. We'd like to thank you for watching another video here at SoCal Training Team. Please take the time to like, share, and subscribe.